uh, this question came up on the Zulip chat this week and I thought it was quite interesting. So it's about uh, semi-closed intervals or semi-open intervals. So if A and B are real numbers, then we can define this interval here, square brackets A, round brackets to B, uh, to be the X's which are at least A and also less than B. Uh, and this definition makes perfect sense if B happens to be less than A. And if B happens to be less than A, uh, then it's just the empty set. So that enables us to ask questions such as the following silly question. Uh, how do we know this? That if A, B and C are arbitrary real numbers, then the interval A, B union, the interval B, C union, the interval C, A, is the uh, interval B, A union, the interval C, B using the interval A, C. So, I mean, three of these intervals are kind of trivially empty. And we have to kind of work out what's going on. So I looked at this question and thought, oh, come on. Uh, we just need to, I mean, A, B and C, clearly the question, the true, I mean, is this true or not? I don't know, let's find out. Clearly the truth value of the question only depends on the order of A, B and C, right? So uh, let's just do, K, I mean, let's split on those six, K, let's, let's try this. My case is H, A, B, A is less than B. There. Uh, and now you see, now you see, we've got two goals. We've got the same, the, the same basic problem, uh, but here we have the extra assumption that a is less than b, and here we have the assumption that a is not less than b. Uh, but that's not really enough, right? I want to know that I, I don't want to have two cases. I want to have six cases. So I really want to split on all these things. So by cases, I'll put a semicolon. By cases, h b c, uh, b is less than c, and by cases, uh, h c a. Uh, C is less than A. There, and after those, I've now got, unfortunately, I haven't got six cases, I've got eight cases. <laughs> uh, but you can see, for example, that this case here um, is, it can't happen, right? It contradicts some theorem about the ordering on the real numbers. The ordering of the real numbers is well ordering. So we should try just poning those cases. Yeah, we, we should have six cases. Why have we got eight? Uh, oh, do you know what? I uh, Let's try... Uh, try x falso linearith. Yeah, that gets it down to seven. Do you know what? We should do less than or equals to on one of these, right? We should do less than on there because we should make sure that uh, a equals b equals c. They're, not, they're neither all true nor all false uh, when a equals b equals c or something. So now this should have taken us down to six cases. Marvellous. So now we've got six cases. So now the, now the question becomes, we know the order of A, B, and C. And, uh, and now we've got to prove that this, this union of three intervals equals this union of three intervals. So I guess the thing to do is prove inclusions in each direction. So X, X, and then split. And so now we'll have 12 goals there. So we know what the order is, and we know that X is in one side of this equality, and we're trying to prove that it's in the other side. So now you can see we, sh we need to break this up into cases, right? Uh, so the next line is some kind of Rintro. Uh, and I'll just cheat and get Lean to write it for me. Rintro question mark. Uh, and they were interesting, weren't they? Yeah, Rintro always suggests the same thing. So why don't we do this? This would be a cool next move. And now we've got 36 goals, but there's lots and lots of inequalities. You see, we've got some in it. Look, we've got to prove that A is less than, we know that A is less than or equal to X and X is less than B, and we've got to prove. So now we know somehow with the order, now we know the complete order of A, B, and C, right? It sounds like anyway. So let's go for it. Uh, let's try this again. Because Linareth might kill some of them. Actually, I'm not entirely sure it will. Let's try it. Let's see if it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah taking it down to 18. We did have 36, right? We had 36 goals. That's taken it down to 18. Uh, and so now, let's have a look at one of these goals. Um, why do I not see the goals? What have I done? Oh, probably, no, this. Let's try this. 
is that okay? Let's put a comma. I've lost it. Come back to me. We're back. We've got 18 goals. And now you can see, like, what's the proof of this is going to be? The idea is that x is either, we're either going to be, these inequalities are either going to prove that x is in this one, or x is in this one, or x is in this one, right? And so we can try, uh, we can try left uh, linear. You see, look, I'll show you. Look, if I go left here, there, do you see the goal has changed? There. The goal used to be x is in this or x is in this. So actually, if I go right, maybe I've just got one. See, it takes a long time to compile now. It's getting a bit boring. If I go right, uh, then we've just got to prove this. So that's just a statement that um, you know, that x is a is less than or equal to x, and x is less than c. You see, this is going to be fine, right? We can prove this goal. I'm just, I'm just concentrating on the top goal right now. Look, let's do this. In here, uh, we've got to. This is the, this is the assertion that x is in this interval, and so this is an and, right? This is a less than or equal to x, and x is less than c. So I can split. And after I split, I've now got goals which are assumptions. Oh, well, this one isn't an assumption. We've got to prove x is less than c, but x is less than b and b is less than c. So linearist will do both of these. There. So you see, that's great. That's solved that. Now we've only got 17 goals. So I should try that on all the goals. But the problem with trying it on all the goals is that if, if it doesn't work, then linearist actually fails with an error. Linearist doesn't kind of do the best it can. So let's try it again. And now we've got 14 goals. Uh, and so now you can kind of see what we're going to do. We are, instead of going right, we can go left. Uh, left, right. Because after left and right, uh, after left, there'll be, there'll be um, it'll be x is in A or x is in B. And so then we can either go left or right again. So there we go. So that's, you see now this might have done all of them. But unfortunately it hasn't done all of them. Six are left. Which is kind of funny because you kind of would have imagined, like we know the entire order of everything. And we've somehow tried, we know that we can't prove, we know that all of these, are, you know, this is six troublesome goals where these assumptions here do not prove that all that all that right so what is going on so let's have a look at this first goal right what is happening why can't we prove this goal because we thought that this thing was going to be obvious right here's let's try and work out what's going on so what do we know we know a is less than b, and we know b is less than c. Uh, and we know that a is less than or equal to x. You see, look, we know that a is less than or equal to x, and x is less than c. But we don't know whether x is less than b or not, right? This is the problem. We, we don't know which, we don't actually know which order things are in, you see. So, for this first goal here, let's do by cases, h, uh, um, let's do x is less than b, there, and then and now what? Let's have a look at what we have to do. You see, it's getting slow, right? Because we, we're trying we're, we're trying to get lots of goals and then and then and then shrink the goals but now every time I hit enter it's slower look a is less than to x and x is less than b so we can prove this with we can prove this one with left uh, we can prove this one with left split uh, assumption there and the right one is going to be... I don't know, write something. Sorry. Uh, if it doesn't like that, let's try let's try putting a comma there. 
Happy? No. Well, oh, I failed to put a comma here. Oh, yes, now it's having a good thing. Uh, oh. Aha, uh -huh. so this is left, left split assumption. And this we don't know. Hmm. Curses. You see, th we're, they're little mazes we have to find our way through, and it's quite annoying because automation won't do it. Now, so now what do we know? We know not x is, so we know that b is less than or equal to x, and x is less than c. So we're in this one, right? And that one is called, uh, that one is called left right, I think. Left right split assumption. That has not gone well. Ah, it's not, a, I see, I need to do linearith this time. Uh, which takes, which takes time, of course. Because I had a not. Right. Do you know what? It would be somehow easier if I did... LT or LE. LT or LE, is that a thing? It is a thing. By cases, we could do this. Cases LT or LE AB with HAB. HAB. So I think everything will still work. But I think now we won't get these knots. Let's look at the goal here. Ah, you see, we've got not x is less than b. Oh, but that's because. Ah, oh, curses. Why have we got that h? Ah, we did this. By cases, you see, we should do this. Lt or le. Go away. We should do this instead x is less than b, x is less than b, we don't even care what they're called. So now that is hopefully compiling. And so now we've got five goals. So now let's have a look and see what conceptually we did here. Uh, we, remember we, this was the problem, x was between a and c, and b was between a and c, but we didn't know whether x was less than b or not. And um, But what's going on here is because a is less than b and b is less than c, uh, this thing here, we can, that the union of that is ico ac, right? So, and this, you see, this is what we know. This is the part, this is the reason this was annoying. Let's do this one in a different way. Let's have a look at what let's have a look at what we have to prove here. Uh, so here we know that C is less than or equal to A is less than B. And so that means that the interval from C to A, union the interval from A to B, is the interval from C to B, you see. So What we would really like to do, I suppose, I would say it suffices. Look, here's what I want to do. It suffices to prove that x is in this or or x is in ICO, ICO AB. Right? I claim and this should just be easy logic. You see it's slow. It's annoying. Uh because we can do cases, we can do cases on this, and then in each case it's just logic. Uh, so it's cases, cases this, cc or something, that should do it.
it didn't do it. That's a bit annoying. Uh, so I'm going to have to do it by hand. Uh, so this is ICOCA. So this is right assumption. And this one is left left assumption. And so now we it suffices to prove that this is this and this is this. And so now there'll be a lemma, right? So now I need to apply kind of ICO union ICO or something. ICO union ICO. Is there some ICO union ICO? Here we go. What's this? So I'm going to apply this. I'm going to apply ICO union ICO et ICO. I see, I see. I should, I should suffice it to prove that X is in this union this, right? There. And now this is ICO ec ICO. There. And now we wait a long time. Uh, and that's really annoying. Oh, I see. I need to rewrite it, of course. Rewrite ICO ec ICO. And then it will give me some goals that I need to fill in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so all of those goals should be, um, all of these goals should now be This should be try split there, and then let's just do this. And I reckon that will finish it. I reckon we'll get an error on the sorry now. There, and the error on the sorry says no goals left. So that's that's the next one. But now you can see, you see the amount of time it's taking. This is kind of awful. Uh, so this question came up on the chat and people started asking uh, whether, there were, whether there were better ways. And so now I'm going to show you some better ways to do this. Let's get rid of this. So the idea is we want to use automation. And so we're going to try X. First, we'll try X, and uh, it doesn't like it. Why doesn't it like it? X X will that do? What is going on? XX should work fine, shouldn't it? Equality of set. Oh, here we go. Right, we're back in the room. Uh, and then split. And now the idea is uh, that we'd like to get finished to do it. See again, why does that? There we go. Uh, so let's try finish. So finish is taking a very long time. In fact, it's taking an extremely long time. <laughs> And I wonder if it's going to time out. Oh, 
Well, well, I never. Well, while we're thinking about that, uh, let's just leave that running. So let me show you um, Floris's proof. Uh, let's make a new scratch file, scratch eight. And let me next show you that the proof that Floris came up with. So he firstly came up with, he firstly proved this. So let's get this stuff running again. So import tactic, open set there. And now is that still, ah, this is, no, that's still processing. So I'm just going to leave it. Uh, and this is his proof that if A is less than or equal to B is less than or equal to C is less than or equal to D, then AC union BD is AD. So this is a better ICO union ICO. And now how has he proved this? You see, he's proved it in the same kind of way that I have, right? He applies subset antisyn. That's exactly proving inclusions in each direction. Uh, and then union subsets, I see to prove that the union is a subset of something. Uh, yeah, do you know what? Let's, let's comment this out. Let's just get the hang. Let's just see. If, let's just check we can knock this off. Begin end. Uh, let's apply sub. I mean that's just x dex, right? Uh, split. And now both of the goals are. Oh no, they're not. Can I really do this? Oh, I see. You only apply union subset to the first thing or something. There. So now we have three. Go you see, this is the problematic one because we don't know which way we're going to go. If we're in AD, then we're not. We're going to have to do some case split. Uh, so this should be easy. Uh, I see. So for these two goals here, uh, there's just some general lemma. Apply ICO, subset ICO. There. And so now we've got to prove a bunch of inequalities. And they will either be, I see. So now we do this. We try REFL. And if that doesn't work, uh, we try assumption. Now what's the story now? Now we've only got one goal, and this is the problematic goal uh, because we don't know which way to go. So I guess here's where we break. Right, so here is, does he do anything any particular, does he do anything clever? I don't know. So let's just do Rintros. Uh, Rintros H1, H2. there uh, and now you see we need to figure out which way to go so let's do uh, let's do cases uh, le or lt or le or something lt or le uh, with x and c there and in this first case we are going left and then split assumption. And then here, we don't know which way we're going. Here we are going, we're going, I think we're just doing right split assumption, I think. Right split assumption. No, right split linear, because it's gonna to have to do a bit of work in that case. <gasps> Didn't work. Why didn't it work? That's a bit annoying. Uh, because I have to do case splits on B or something. And now I have to do linearith for this one. Oh, we're still, oh my goodness, what have I done? Have I misunderstood this question? What's going on? If X is less than B, then it's left because x is less than b 
a is less than or equal to x, x is less than b. Oh, it's because no, it's because we're not doing the reals. I don't care about decidable linear orders. Import data real basic. Now that should do it. That has done it. And it takes a while to compile. There. Uh, so let's put a full stop after it. And then what he proves is this. And now I thought this was quite interesting. I thought this was quite an uh, interesting lemma, ICO union ICO, because I couldn't see that it could be difficult, uh, but we forever run into these we need to we need to know which way to go. So I wonder what the definition of min and max are. So again, you see, my instinct is always to unfold everything and get Linareth to try and do it. Uh, but I see now that Floris doesn't do that. Let's have a look at Floris's proof of this. Floris's proof of union icon union. So I got actually, I remember I getting, I remember getting stuck. Here's Floris's proof. Let's see if it compiles for the reals. There we go. It's compiled. So he does a case split, LE total, what's this? A is less to B or B is less to A, okay. So he does a case split on A and B, and he does a case split on C less or equal to D. There. And so at that point in the proof, he has got how many goals? Uh, He's got four goals. And now he does what's possibly a non terminal simp. Uh, I see he's doing a non terminal simp because he doesn't have access to Linareth or something. And after that, he's still down to four goals. Oh, I see, but it's just changed the left hand side. And in this case, I see, <clears throat> in this case, he needs to now do, he needs to now do a case split on, oh, how annoying, come on. This is a bad case somehow. Why, why are these other cases easier? This case here, ICO AB is ICO min AC max BD. I see, this is just an equality of two things. The point is that this is true, A equals min AC and uh, B equals max BD, and so the simplifier can do it. And what's this one? And this one here, the simplifier can also min AC is C, and max BD is D. So the simplifier can do that one, and this one it couldn't do, by the looks of things. We've got to show that something is the empty set. Aha. And so there's some lemma that says the I there, there's some lemma that says this. And Simp manages to do this as well, which is quite cool. Uh, but here we need this awful case split again. So this is somehow for always, if you could just argue about, if you could just argue about intervals being, you know, unions of intervals being intervals. But now we need a case split because we don't know what min AC is and somehow the proof depends on, the proof depends on which direction we're going. So we do a case split. You know, we've got four cases again, and I see, and now, and now here we have to decide which, well, no, we could just do subset union, I see. B is less than or equal to C or something, is it? We can use this ICOIC ICO that he just applied. So this first goal goes, is B less than, oh, I see, C is less, we need C is less than or equal to B. We need A is less than or equal to C, yes. A is less than or equal to C, C is less than or equal to B, B is less than or equal to D. So this thing applies. And now what hap now what's happening with the second one? Aha, uh, uh -huh, there's just some trick. Right, to prove that, 
to prove that a union b equals a it suffices to prove that this is a subset of this and now there's some ico subset ico that i see okay so those are those three proofs and now finally how are we going to prove this one uh and now what's union com okay oh, i see union com we get away with now we can fly ico i see so there you go so that's all the cases and there's this proof of ico union ico and now he proves and do you know what let's put a full stop at the end of that as well there and now he proves this uh and again i'm just going to prove it for the real numbers because one of my proofs didn't work for linear orders uh and again i see so here he has to do no case splitting so i co union i co same I see, but he uses ICO union ICO. Uh, so this is some key result. I see, this, this tells us how to do the union. Ah, ah, ah. This tells us, this, this is a key result that he's isolated. ICO union ICO same. ICO AB union ICO BC is, is equal to another ICO. It's ICO min AB max BC. And the proof of this is presumably by, what does he actually have to prove here? What's the goal? It's going to prove min AB is less than equal to max BC. I see, and that's just true by linearith, isn't it? Yes, I see. So they they give you the hint. Min AB is less than equal to B. Uh, and so this is a proof. Yeah, min AB is less than equal to B. And this is the proof that B is less than equal to max BC. Okay, so there's ICO union ICO saying. So this is somehow the key insight. ICO union ICO same and now you can imagine that we're going to be able to do this right so now let's now let's go back to our original question let's see uh, let's see let's prove it for the reals again and now hopefully I'm not going to have to rewrite anything I mean I'm not going to have to split hello uh, so now we're going to take we're going to be able to rewrite ICO union ICO same. I mean, why don't we even simp it? Uh, if we simp only it, it might even it might even be a valid move. If we simp only ICO ec icon same, then oh, how annoying! I see. We can't. Oh, how annoying. It only rewrites once. Oh, how annoying. I see, I see, I see. So we rewrite ICO union ICO same. Uh, and then I think the point is that this left hand one, we know that max BC is bigger than or equal to C, so we can rewrite ICO union ICO. This this kind of this thing that we proved earlier, and um, and now this should be well we might need hints for this, uh, and now really we would like to do the same sort of thing over here. So let's rewrite a union com or something. Let's swap some things around. And now, oh, we're still not quite there. This is a bit annoying. I want to apply, what did I do? So maybe I should do union com in a more clever way. What did it swap? Let's try IKBA. Union com. Let's try IKBA. IKBA. And now do I have, yeah, you see, now I've got a CB and a BA. So now I can rewrite uh, ICO union, ICO same again. ICO union, ICO same. Let's hit, let's hit this. 
and now this max b a is at least a so I can rewrite ico union ico hopefully can I? I can and now I've got to prove that these mins and these so this looks great right uh, so now here this is going to be con I mean this is going to be congre except that congre will do too much right uh, and all the other things congre let's do congre sorry oh is that yeah exactly congre let's try congre using one or something let's try congre prime because it's better uh, is it using Congre, oh, just just one. Congre primed one. How about that? Uh, yeah, that's the kind of goal I want to prove. I want to prove that those mins are equal and those maxes are equal. Uh, Congre primed one, and now I need to go more into these, right? There. And now these goals here should all be, I really want them to be, I just want them to go away. Let's try this. Uh, repeat unfold min. So this is just a really dirty way of doing it. Repeat unfold min, repeat unfold max. Let's see, let's see how horrible it is. Uh, split ifs now I just don't know how many goals I'm going to get at this point split ifs let's see 13 goals and I'm hoping that linear if will solve them all and it did not didn't it it's we've got three left uh Rotten luck. So is this true? Why hasn't... Why did those... Those min should have got split. Do I need to do this again or something? Every... I thought there'd be no mins and maxes in any goals at this point. There's no mins and maxes. So now I split ifs and I get 13 goals. Ah, and what's this? What are these doing down here? Oh, I see I've got four goals now. Why have I got what? I unfold min and I unfold. Why do I get these goals have only got maxes in and now I unfold max. Well, fair enough. Split ifs, linear if, and now what have I got? Is this true? And let's just do this, I mean, let's just try this. Repeat unfold min. Repeat unfold max. Let's see what I've got. They're not unfolding. I'm unfolding the wrong min. What min is this? Right, maybe we should see what Floris does. Floris tries finish. 
I don't really understand the power of finish. Let's try fi let's try finish on everything. Finish is done really badly. Uh, that's really annoying. Let's just try this. When we were here, I felt quite confident with that line. Floris does this. And now what's the error? So isn't Floris clever? For the first goal, so after this there are five goals. And for the first goal he solves it with simp. Oh, he's written a confluent rewriting system. <laughs> I see, I see. So there's four goals and this one he solved using a confluent rewriting system. Which is very clever of him. And uh, all these other ones, what does simp do? Oh, simp does, I see, so the split ifs. I see, well, there you go, simp finish. So that, that's, his, uh, that's his proof of the, I don't know, that's kind of beautiful. Uh, and then Mario found something. And then Yuri came up with this. Let's see if this works. Uh, so we've got A, B and C in the real numbers. Yuri proved this. Which is somehow this ICO, Union ICO. I see. Aha, he's avoided he avoids ICO union ICO same. There, so we don't need, we don't need ICO, all this stuff that Floris did. This amazing insight, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of all of that. And I think this still compiles. Yeah, this is compiled and now, uh, you see, let's, we can rewrite ICO union, ICO union, ICO, sorry, ICO union, ICO, union, ICO, cycle, there. And so now, and also, we should be able to, uh, I want to I want to do this rewrite show let's show this equals I would just write them in the right I just want to write them in the other order ICO union AC union uh, ICO union CB union ICO union BA Why I'm in this horrible mode. Ico Union BA. There, and that's by. So why is that's just going to be obviously true? Uh, by library search. Is that going to be in there? A Union B Union C equals C Union B Union A. It can't find it. So maybe it's going to be simp. Let's try this. Uh, simp union com. Now that, oh, that has worked. So now I have to prove, no, it hasn't worked, unfortunately.
There are unsolved goals. Ico AC. Oh, come on. This is surely Finnish. Finnish must do this. Finnish does do this. Great. Uh, so we're on the way to our final proof. And so now we have to prove there. And so now we can rewrite this again. So in fact, we could do we could do simp only this. Simp only this. And now uh, we did this, right? We write a confluent rewriting system. Uh, we try this. And it does it. There's Floris's amazing, uh, amazing trick. And now Mario says, "Well, I mean, maybe that's a not, maybe that's the time to stop. It's five o'clock." Uh, but I just was quite surprised that this stuff was uh, harder than it looked. I mean, why isn't Finnish doing this? What does Finnish do? But still, I don't know. I'm off to the Discord. Uh, I thought this was quite a quite a weirdly difficult thing. Uh, and I will maybe.